Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name's Amanda. Welcome, I am 32 years old and I just had my first baby, a little boy. His name is Chase and he was born April 16th and I've got my mama bear shirt on and I have my little nameplate. I guess it's not really a nameplate but it's um, like a personalized necklace with his name on it that one of my friends gave me. Thanks Liz if you're watching. And today I am going to share my birth story with you and I'll link all of my pregnancy updates below in case you wanted to see what was going on. I had some, I wouldn't say serious complications, but some complications throughout my pregnancy. I had gestational diabetes and um, towards the end of my pregnancy, I started having really low fluid levels. And I think my last update was at 35 weeks and um, I had just been talking about what was going on. Um, my baby was breached too, so I'll link a video to that final pregnancy update um, because I did have Chase at 37 weeks and it was via C-section and it was, I knew that I was gonna have a C-section but I didn't know when it was gonna happen. We couldn't tell. So. Check out the other updates if you're interested, but let's go back. I know that it's he's six weeks old now, so this was kind of like over a month ago that he was born. So I had been going to these weekly ultrasounds to do an NST and a BPP test to make sure that Chase was fine and that there was enough fluid and everything like that. So one of my last visits to the hospital get to get those ultrasounds was on what was it april 12th which was a friday so that appointment actually went really well i went in my fluid was at like an 8.9 or something like that so tons of fluid in there i was totally okay to go home there was no question and i kind of thought that i had another like couple weeks they said that my doctor told me if i was going to have a c-section the latest that they would allow me to go was 38 weeks so that would have been April 23rd, um, but I had him at 37 weeks. So I kind of, I went home after that Friday and then my next appointment was with my OB on April 16th, which was a Tuesday. And so my appointment was in the morning and I had been bringing my hospital bag with me for the to the ultrasounds and doctor's appointments pretty much every single time for the past like three or four visits just because my doctor was like, he could come anytime. We're not really sure what's going on. Um, or how long he has left in there because my fluid levels were low and things like that. So basically, I went in on the 16th to my doctor and she has two locations. One of them is um, kind of more in the suburbs where I live and the other one is at the hospital. So this appointment was at the hospital and um, I wasn't planning on having an ultrasound, but I went in there and she actually did one for me. And so if you had watched my previous updates, those ultrasounds were mainly to see how much amniotic fluid I had. So she's looking, 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 and one of the first things she said to me was, do you feel any swelling or anything? And I was like, maybe a little bit. And she's like, your face looks really, really swollen and your legs have some swelling too. So I was like, oh yeah, maybe like, I guess I kind of feel more swollen. And I just felt a little, I don't know, puffy and warm. I don't know. It, when I woke up and like before the appointment, the appointment was I think at nine o'clock or something in the morning. So when I woke up, I, I felt a little bit, I don't know, just a little different, just like a little fuller, I, I don't know. And then she kind of pointed that out too. So she's looking at the ultrasound and she's like, I, I can't find any amniotic fluid sac. She's like, she's going through and looking, looking, looking. And then she finally finds one little tiny sack and there's like, like one, I don't know what the, um, the measurement they use, but like one, whatever, I don't know if it's an ounce or whatever it is, but a very, very teeny, teeny, tiny one. And she just kind of looked at me and she was like, all right, uh, we got to have that baby today. So you can imagine the shock that I kind of was in. I mean, I, I, I was almost speechless. I was like, what? 
really? She's like, yeah, I got to get you over to labor and delivery right away. She's like, you're going to have a C-section. She kind of just went through all of the procedural stuff with the C-section because I, we never had actually gone over that in any of my prior appointments. Um, but she had a C-section at the same hospital and she delivered, I think at 34, five or 36 weeks. So she said she had a really good experience with it. And I had known because the baby was breached that I was going to have a C-section regardless. It was just a matter of time when it would happen. So I'm kind of like in a state of shock when she tells me that. My husband thankfully was with me at this appointment. He had been going with me just because you know, we just didn't know. And, um, and I was kind of too early on to be having major contractions or going into labor. I didn't feel anything personally. Uh, so I, I wouldn't have even known. Um, maybe I was having Braxton Hicks for a week or two before, but nothing that like bothered me or that was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this baby. So we kind of went through the procedure stuff, like what was going to happen. And then Thankfully, I had my hospital bag with me and we went over to labor and delivery, which was right at the hospital, um, literally like a couple steps away. So I get there and I check in and the, the nurses there were like, you have to stop drinking water. So what was, what was discussed with my doctor was that I would have the c-section at 6 p.m. so the reason for that was because of the anesthesia I wouldn't be able to eat or you're not supposed to eat or drink anything for six to eight hours something like that so um, by the time I was done with my appointment it was about 10 o'clock in the morning by 6 p.m. I would have had eight hours without eating or drinking so what happened from there, um, I was still kind of like shaken up, but I was like a little bit excited at the same time because I had just, you know, me and my husband were just constantly in this unknown, like going to these ultrasounds every single week, not knowing when he was going to come, thinking that maybe that day was going to be the day, but then we would go home and a weekend would pass and everything. So I kind of felt a sense of relief. And I think I said that in um, one of my earlier vlogs, just talking about everything that I went through in my third trimester, like hearing that I was going to have a C-section, I was relieved because I kind of knew that it was coming. So anyway, I go over to um, the labor and delivery. They schedule me for the 6 p.m. C-section. Me and my husband go into, I guess it's kind of like a triage area in labor and delivery. Uh, there was another woman who was kind of, I could, I could hear them but not see them because the drapes were around. They were like across from us. So um, I was just like, they hooked me up to all the machines to monitor him and to monitor me. And literally I was just sitting there with my husband for the rest of the day. And unfortunately I didn't bring my camera with me because I just, I didn't get the feeling that I was going to have the baby that day. So I kind of like rushed out of the house, just grabbed my hospital bag and that was it. But so we're just waiting in this little area and, um, the anesthesiologist came in, my doctor came in a little bit later, and um, the nurse was there as well. So I, I was just kind of like hanging out. I was honestly in tears for a portion of the time there just because I was like, oh my gosh. It was just very surreal to look down at my belly and, and think like, okay, this baby is in here and in a matter of hours, like he's gonna be out. So they explained the whole procedure to me and and it's only like a 20 minute procedure. I was gonna get the spinal and then basically have the C-section. And I think that my doctor had two other C-sections scheduled before me. So um, that's why I was waiting. And uh, the woman that was in the same room with me um she i think also had a c-section too because she was literally like i heard them wheel her out and like 30 to 35 minutes later she was back in the room and like or her husband was back in the room with the baby you could hear the baby crying and then she came back in too okay this is getting really long-winded so basically one of the prior c-sections was canceled so I thought that was really funny. It's like the, the way that the anesthesiologist, he came in and he told us that 
that they had a cancellation and that they were moving my C-section up. And so then it was gonna be at five o'clock. And then I guess the person, I was like, this is weird, you know? It's like a dinner reservation. You just cancel your C-section the day that you have it. Anyways, I guess maybe the person went into labor on their own or decided that they were gonna wait or found another hospital, I don't even know. But I was like, I was kind of laughing at that. I was like, all right, yeah, no thanks. Not gonna take the five o'clock uh, C-section, but you know, go somewhere else. So I was just waiting around and then after they said that it was gonna be at five o'clock, at this point, I think it was around maybe 2.30 or 3 p.m. And so I'm just in that room with my husband. I'm texting all of my family and friends, letting them know that, you know, today's the day we're having the baby. And, you know, I was just like FaceTiming with my mom and my sister and like other family and stuff like that while I was waiting. And it was... Uh, I really wish I had my camera because trying to think about all the emotions that I was going through was really, really hard instead of like capturing it in the moment. But anyway, so I was mentally preparing for this 5 p.m. C-section and then at about quarter to four, the anesthesiologist comes back in and says, we're gonna move your C-section up even more. The one that we just had was finished and we've got time for yours. So you're going at 4.30. And so basically um, I was just like freaking out a little bit, 45 minutes or so until I was gonna have the baby. Me and Pete were kind of just like talking and like holding each other and I was crying and it was, you know, there was, I was nervous at the same time because C-section is major surgery and I don't know, my doctor, because she had one and she was explaining her experience and she said it was like not a big deal. I don't know. It just kind of eased my, my fears a bit. And so I wasn't, I don't know. I was more just excited and, um, feeling the anticipation of meeting the baby and like, what is he going to look like? What's he going to be like? How much is he going to weigh? Because at 37 weeks, like he had been measuring small, he'd been measuring two weeks earlier than, um, his gestational age for pretty much the last month of, um, my pregnancy. So, you know, earlier that day when my doctor, uh, measured him, via the ultrasound. She said, I think she said he was five pounds, four ounces or something like that. So I was just hoping that he was going to be like big enough that he wouldn't go to the NICU. And so a lot of stuff was just running through my mind. Um, I was hoping that his lungs were fine because we had to get steroids. Uh, I was hospitalized earlier. I'll link a video above, um, at 33 weeks, I got hospitalized for the low, um, amniotic fluid. So a lot of stuff was just going through my mind. And finally, the time came that I was about to have the baby. The anesthesiologist came in, he gave, or maybe it was the doctor, I can't remember. Somebody came in, gave Pete a pair of scrubs. Um, I had to put one of those hats on. I had to take off all of my jewelry and I couldn't have anything on like that. Um, I, what else did they say? I hadn't been drinking any fluids, not even water or eating anything for the past six hours. And, and then I was ready. So the anesthesiologist and the nurse came in, they wheeled me into the, into the room where I was going to have the C-section. My doctor was in there. So the first thing that they did was they had, um, I had the spinal and I was actually not that worried. The, the anesthesiologist was so, so kind. Like he kept on coming in and checking on us and like updating us throughout the time that we were waiting. And then um, he was telling me that the needle was pretty small so I probably wouldn't feel anything major. Like it wasn't gonna be like a huge gush, like rush of pain or anything when I got it. So I got the spinal. I basically just was like sitting on this uh, table. And by the way, this, I don't know if you've, ladies who've had a C-section, you know, but because it was my first one, I didn't know what to expect. And so basically this room that I went in was like, it looked like one of those rooms in, 
in the ER, you know, like that you see on TV, like completely white, all of these medical instruments everywhere. Like it was cold in there. It was extremely sterile. Like everybody was in coats and, um, you know, had masks over their face and everything like that. And it just like, the lights were really, really bright. So everything looked like white and it was kind of a very scary experience. And so there was just like the table that I was sitting on and I don't know, everything kind of happened really quick. So I got the spinal, then they laid me down. They were explaining like, you might feel some pressure. We're gonna make sure that we do a little test to see if you can feel anything. We wanna make sure that you're completely numb and you won't feel a thing. You might feel a little tugging, you might feel a little pressure, but you should feel no pain. So I'm like, okay. So they lay me down and, um, and then they put the little sheet above me and at that point, my husband was allowed to come in. So he was in the other room. They didn't allow him in until basically the procedure was about to start. And they told him that we could not take any videos. He could take some pictures, just like regular photos with his phone. Uh, when the baby came out, um, they would show it to him and everything, show him to show the baby to him and everything. And he could take some pictures, but he couldn't go on the other side of the um the like drape that was up because they said that in the past they've allowed husbands or spouses to um look at what was going on and the amount of blood like they had people passing out on the floor so in order to avoid that they said he had to stay over by me which was fine because i needed like somebody to hold on to okay so my husband's there I'm laying there on the table the drape is over i can't see anything my my arms are like like this I'm like laying back like this my arms are out and I'm trying I'm starting to feel um the the anesthesia kick in and it was a very very bizarre experience for me I started to feel numb in my legs and everything almost right away like it literally was maybe a couple of minutes and then I started to feel numb and then they were asking me I guess I don't know if they were poking me or pinching me or doing something um but they were asking me if I could feel anything and I at first I could feel like that there was somebody doing something but I couldn't feel anything in regards to like a sensation and then after that I I literally felt nothing and I think they also put the um the catheter in after I got the anesthesia, uh, because obviously I would need it after this major surgery. So I'm laying there and then my doctor pretty much says like, okay, um, you shouldn't feel any pain. You shouldn't feel anything. We're going to start. So I, and they kept on making sure throughout the whole time that like I was feeling okay. And that you know, I wasn't feeling pain or anything like that. But what happened was, as I'm laying there, I'm like trying mentally to like wiggle my toes. I guess it's just like a natural thing. Like you're, you're trying to like move a body part, but I couldn't. And it was sending these like signals to my brain to like start freaking out because I was trying to wiggle my toes, but I couldn't do it. So I started like breathing really heavily. And then I just had to like mentally relax myself and say, okay, you're not, you're not going to feel anything. You're not going to be able to wiggle your toes right now. Just relax and think about something else. So after that, like, another weird thing that happened was that the anesthesia, which was supposed to be like, you know, from like your stomach down, I guess, um, the numbness, well, it started like seeping up through my chest and into my arms. And, and they said that because I was only five, I'm only five one, I'm pretty small. Like that could happen because I'm a, I'm a, sh a shorter person. And they said it was totally fine. But what was happening is that I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't breathe because I was feeling numbness like all through my chest and all through my arms and, and like this pins and needles feeling. And I was kind of like, just started to freak out a bit. I, I couldn't really breathe. I was like, telling my husband, he's, he, my husband is kind of like listening to what's going on with the actual C-section and I'm just freaking out mentally because I can't feel my arms. And I'm like, is this normal? I feel pins and needles. Like I can't move my arms. I'm like nervous. I can't breathe. I'm like trying to gasp for air. 
And obviously I was breathing, but you know, the anesthesia is telling your brain that like you're not breathing because it's, it's numb or whatever. So this is just happening, happening. And then at the same time, I'm like going in and out with Pete, like what, what's going on over there? Are they almost done? And then my doctor's talking, but like my mind is not registering anything that's happening beyond me. Like anyways, the procedure is really, really short. Honestly, I think it was like 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, I hear the baby cry. <sighs> so emotional. I'm sorry. I'm like, like reliving it right now. But, um, oh my God. <sighs> Just like thinking back to that day. Anyway, I hear him cry and... Pete is like, I was like, go Pete, go take the pictures, go take the pictures, I'm fine. So he like stops holding my hand and he like goes over and, um, and he starts taking pictures of the baby and the first, <laughs> the first thing that Chase did when he came out was he peed on one of the nurses. <laughs> So it was just so funny. It's like his entrance into the world. He's like peeing on the nurse. So, all right, I got to get myself together. This is like crazy. I got to finish this video. And it's already, holy shit, it's already almost 24 minutes. Um, so he, uh, Pete is taking all these pictures and then he comes over and the, they're obviously like cleaning the baby off and like doing whatever they need to do to the newborn. I still can't see anything. I'm still just like over here, like can't breathe. They're telling me that he peed on the nurse and I'm like trying to laugh, but I like feel like I can't breathe. So I'm like, <laughs> like really awkward. It was probably like a weird probably looked really weird sounded pretty weird um but like I was definitely in tears and then Pete came over and he like showed me a bunch of pictures but I was just like also feeling the drugs at the same time so you know it's like you're you're kind of like in a I don't know maybe if you've had a c-section your experience might be totally different but I was kind of like in a daze at that point and they actually didn't bring the baby over to me while I was in the operating room after, um, so they took the baby, Pete left, uh, I think they brought him over to the postpartum room and then they did whatever else they had to do cleaning up the baby and then, um, they actually took the baby over to the room and Pete was able to hold him while I was still in the room getting sewn up and everything. So it... Honestly, like I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. I've heard that some people hold the baby like and do skin to skin immediately and other times like with a c-section They just need to like finish everything up So sew, sew me up and like get everything sterilized and get me into the room so I can like actually hold the baby and He's all wrapped up and everything. So that's what happened for me. They they finished the procedure, they wheeled me out. I honestly had no recollection of moving from that room to the postpartum room. It kind of felt like I woke up and there I am like looking at Pete holding our son in this little towel um, or swaddle blanket. And then literally I was just like in one of the beds and they gave him to me. We did skin to skin and everything was just like such, He's crying. Hold on. All right. Sorry, guys. Little man, little mister. Uh, he was just down in his crib for a nap, and um, he just started crying. So I just went and picked him up, and he's um, oh, he's probably going back to sleep. He just wanted to be held. But anyway, this is so... Um, it's a great point in time because I was just talking about how I was holding him for the first time, and here he is six weeks later. But anyway, they um, obviously just like put him on my chest. We did skin to skin. I was just like bawling, crying, like, and just <sighs> so emotional, gushing over the amount of hair this kid has. Like, oh my gosh, from the like, the last month or two of ultrasounds, they could actually see the hair on his head and they were like, oh my gosh, your baby has so much hair. And I had um, really, really bad heartburn. So I kind of knew that he was gonna have a thick head of hair. Look at this guy. 
so anyway, uh, he was totally just like a little dream. I mean, he was so cute. He was born at 5.07 p.m. So like literally they started everything at 4.30 and within, you know, af af you know, it took time to do the spinal and everything. But once he was done, it was such a, just like such a quick procedure and everything. So he was five pounds, six ounces and 18 and a half inches long and perfectly fine. His lungs are great and um, I was just in heaven. I was I was still very kind of like loopy from all the drugs, but I was like FaceTiming with my family and just like texting all my friends and family about him for the rest of the day and just holding him and pretty much like you do all the rest of the the things that that they tell you like I I was trying to breastfeed him and get like the colostrum out so that he could eat and um but he he was totally fine and he didn't have to go into the NICU at all. We stayed in the hospital for three days and so that I could recover too because I did just have a pretty big um, surgery and then they had to do a bunch of tests on him. They had to do like a hearing test. They also had to, it, it was so sad, they had to keep pricking his, his the bottom of his feet a few days or like a I forget how many hours in between, maybe like 12, every 12 hours to test his blood sugar levels because I had gestational diabetes. So they wanted to make sure that his blood sugar was like stable and that they didn't need to, to do anything or send him to the NICU or anything like that. So he did that. Um, they also, at the end of our stay, they... They did a car seat test to make sure that he was okay in the car seat that we brought. And he basically, they put him in there for like an 45 minutes to an hour to make sure that, you know, he didn't stop breathing and that he was fine to be taken home. Um, my, I'll do, a, I, I think I'll do another video on my C-section and how I recovered. Um, honestly, right now at six weeks, I, I'm feeling amazing. And they had me like in the first few days, there was definitely some pain. They asked me to walk around and kind of make sure that the muscles were moving and loosening up and not being so stiff. But, you know, I it was a pretty, pretty easy stay and um, a very, very memorable experience. I just, I can't believe how everything like turned out. And what was interesting was that I was trying to plan my maternity leave and I literally, I had to wrap up like a bunch of things and I told I told my company and my boss and everything that the last day that I would be working was April 15th and I swear he, he like knew that I had to get stuff done and tie up loose ends because he was born the following day. So I worked right up until the day that I had him and so now um, I have 12 weeks and so he's six weeks old. So I've got six weeks left with him before I have to go back to work. But he is just such a joy. He's such a sweet little baby. He's, um, you know, he's up and he eats every like hour and a half to three hours. He's like, does these little cackles. He sounds like a little velociraptor. <laughs> but he's just been, such a little miracle we've just had you know the best six weeks ever and we just are so in love with this little guy um that's pretty much it this video is really really long thank you so much for sticking with me i hope you enjoyed my birth story i really wish i could have vlogged it but you know they wouldn't have allowed me to have the camera in in the room that um that i delivered in anyway so it's fine and then we got to kind of just like have our moments and be in the moment with him um when he was born and right after so thanks so much for watching please subscribe if you want to continue on my journey into mother and to see how this little guy is growing. Um, I appreciate all of the love and support that you've shown me throughout my pregnancy for all of my subscribers and, and viewers out there. So thank you so much. Love you guys. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye. Say bye, Chase. <laughs> bye, YouTube. <laughs>